Uh, and thanks to at home for joining us this hour. So I have congratulations to offer. Congratulations, you guys. Uh, we are getting a new boat. Uh, not right away. We have to wait and see if, if, in fact, there is a conviction. But if there is, look at what we are getting. Now, when I first read this in the indictment, I thought like, oh, we're getting like a little sailboat thingy. It said it's a catamaran that we're getting, and then it gave a whole number. And I figured that meant like a little like training sailing boat. Full disclosure, that misconception on my part might be because I know nothing about boats. I do own a canoe, but I still don't even understand how to control that. If I try to do it myself, I just go around in circles. The only way I can operate the canoe is if Susan decides she wants to paddle me around, in which case I catch gigantic fish like that. I don't even try to drive the, the canoe. I can't even, like, so, like, grain of salt here, I don't get boats. But I'm reading through this part of the indictment, and it describes that we, the American taxpayers, are about to get a catamaran. And so to me, no boat concepts. That seems like no big deal. But then, you look the thing up by the whole number that is in the indictment, the catamaran whole number, and it turns out it's not just some little training sailboat. It's a 40-foot long catamaran, and it's basically a big speedboat thingy. Uh, and it is really, really, do we have the picture? There, thank you very much. It, this is it. This, this apparently is a 40-foot catamaran. It's this gigantic plush speedboat thingy. This is what we are getting which is very nice, right? Congratulations are in order. We're getting one of these. It's a 2018, brand new, nice brand. We're also getting a brand new 2018 Ford F-150, also a trailer that goes with it. And I think we're also gonna get these two items from Caterpillar. This is the first one. Now, I don't think of these things as the sort of thing that people bring home for personal use, but how fun would this be, right? Uh, this one, a, a model just like this, is described in the indictment as a tractor, but when you look it up based on the model number in the indictment, I, I think more specifically it's what Caterpillar calls a small dozer, which would be fun. I mean, imagine tooling around on that in your back lawn. Also, we're getting one of these. It's a Model 320 medium-sized Caterpillar hydraulic excavator. Not the blue thing, the yellow thing. We, the American taxpayers, are getting one of these to play with, plus about $5 million in cash. Because if, it turns out, you were only able to obtain all that cash and all of those things, that surprisingly large boat and the small dozer and all the rest of it, if you were only able to get all of those great things because of your crimes, specifically in this case because of your bribery of the main official charged by the Trump administration with overseeing the rebuilding of Puerto Rico's infrastructure and power grid after Hurricane Maria. Well, then if you are in fact convicted of those crimes for which you are now accused, you will have to give up the fruits of those crimes. You will have to give up the loot, the cash, right? You'll also have to give up the amazing medium-sized hydraulic excavator and the very fast 40-foot long catamaran and the boat and the trailer and the truck and all the rest of it. In any other presidential administration, after 3,000 Americans were killed in a catastrophic hurricane and a botched federal disaster response thereafter, it would be the scandal of the year. It would be a presidency-defining, if not presidency-ending scandal if the top person who the federal government put in charge of infrastructure rebuilding after that hurricane got arrested and charged with 10 felonies for allegedly taking bribes from the contractor who got huge contracts to do that work. Oh, and by the way, the work isn't, uh, still isn't done, and it's still an ongoing disaster. The contractor himself was charged with eight felony counts. He's the one who's going to have to hand over his surprisingly fast boat and the bulldozer and the truck and the cash and all the rest. In addition to him, a FEMA deputy chief of staff is charged with three felony counts for allegedly setting herself up with a private sector job while working on FEMA contracts for the company she was getting to hire her at something roughly approaching triple her FEMA salary. And of course, there's the deputy regional administrator in FEMA, uh, for FEMA in Puerto Rico, who, who was designated the sector lead there for power and infrastructure following the Hurricane Maria disaster. You remember why all those people died after the hurricane had blown through, right? With no power, including no power to the hospitals and all the rest of it. Uh, that Trump administration official is now facing 10 felony charges, bribery, conspiracy, 
honest services wire fraud. In, in terms of this ongoing disaster, you may remember how some of this shook out. You might remember that the first contractor who got a gigantic, inexplicable FEMA contract from the Trump administration to rebuild the power grid in Puerto Rico, this thing on which you know thousands of people's lives were hinging, the first contractor who got that huge contract from FEMA to rebuild Puerto Rico's grid was a mysterious, previously unheard of contractor from Montana who seemed to have links to the Trump administration, maybe. It was a firm that appeared to have basically no employees. They had two full-time employees. They were based in a suburban track house. And after lots of controversy over who they were and how they got this very, very, very important and remunerative gig, they ultimately lost the gig when they couldn't explain, among other things, why they were planning to charge the U.S. taxpayers an hourly rate for all the linemen who'd be working on electrical lines in Puerto Rico. They'd be charging an hourly rate for those linemen of $300 per hour per lineman. And so that contract fell apart in scandal. That was the first contract they gave out after Hurricane Maria to set up the grid. That one, uh. Then they brought this other contractor on board. Through FEMA, this other contractor called COBRA, they were gonna get paid $1.8 billion as the plan B second choice contractor to rebuild Puerto Rico's electrical grid. They ended up getting paid $1.1 billion before their contract too was canceled because of mysterious irregularities that were discovered only after $1.1 billion had already been dispersed to them. Those irregularities are less mysterious now that we can see this litany of bribery charges laid out in black and white in this federal indictment. So this has just been a disastrously managed, man-made catastrophe from beginning to end. And it continues. And the people of Puerto Rico have paid and are paying the human price for it. And now we've got these three arrests. And depending on how these prosecutions turn out, we, the American people, may not only see some people in jail for these alleged crimes, we may get ourselves a new boat and some other new stuff, too, by virtue of the forfeiture section of this bombshell indictment. But it turns out that this is a story that just keeps getting more astonishing by the day. You probably heard about this indictment already, right? Well, get this. So the high-ranking FEMA official who just got arrested for bribery, the 10 charges, right? Turns out she had a deputy at her position for FEMA in Puerto Rico. She was the Trump administration's sector lead for power and infrastructure in Puerto Rico. Her number two was the deputy sector lead for power and infrastructure in Puerto Rico. What's his background? As first reported by CBS News, it turns out that he too, the deputy, has recently been arrested in a totally different giant U.S. government bribery scandal. He was a Navy officer who was suspended from his Navy command over his alleged involvement in the Fat Leonard scandal, which we've covered quite a bit here on the show, the biggest Navy bribery scandal ever. It's this big, sprawling, lurid scandal involving lots of money and lots of classified information and lots of hookers and lots of really expensive meals at terrible-sounding restaurants. Uh, th this guy was suspended from his Navy command because of his alleged involvement in the Fat Leonard bribery scandal in the Navy. Nevertheless, when the Trump administration took office in 2017, they decided that that's the guy they would hire to this senior role at FEMA. Now, did they ask the military why this guy had been suspended from his Navy command by any chance before they hired him? I don't know, but any mystery around that part of the guy's past would have been cleared up this past year in August when he was indicted by a federal grand jury for his alleged involvement in that Navy bribery scheme. And he was arrested thereafter. So think about this for a second. The number one person who the Trump administration assigned to oversee restoration of power in Puerto Rico, the restoration of the power grid in Puerto Rico, that person has now been arrested on 10 felony counts for bribery. Her deputy on the job has also been arrested and indicted on multiple federal felony counts for alleged bribery. But in his case, it's a whole different bribery scheme. I mean, they must have gotten along so well at the office, right? Secret Santa in their corner of FEMA headquarters must have been like, I mean, like, oh, look, you got me a ski mask. <gasps> Is that a fingerprint removal kit? Oh, my God. Who wants the fake ID for opening Swiss bank accounts? I'll trade you that for the lock picks. I mean, like, what was going on? How do you end up with, I mean, that would be, if you were aiming at hiring multiple felony bribery indicted, I mean, 
and the but don't worry, the Trump administration has decided to shake things up and get control over there. Uh, earlier this year, the Trump administration announced President Trump's new nominee to be the new head of FEMA. Now, they announced him in February. They formally announced him a couple months later. But it's been six months since they announced that he's the Trump administration pick. Six months. Whatever happened to that nomination? Well, in recent days, there have been these sort of vague, slippery reports that there might be something going wrong with this nomination. Politico reporting recently that there was something personal. There was a personal issue in the nominee's background that was tripping up his nomination process. Nobody was willing to say what the personal issue was or why it didn't surface when he went through his confirmation hearing and was cleared by committee, why it might only be surfacing as his nomination should have been heading to the floor for a final Senate vote. There was later reporting suggesting that the personal issue might have had something to do with an altercation. Okay, but still no specifics on that. I mean, given the Republican-controlled Senate's willingness to confirm basically anybody from the Trump administration for any purpose, the holdup with this guy started to seem a little worrying. I mean, think about all the people they've let through, right? We don't know what's holding this guy up, but it is holding him up. Now it emerges from reporting done by NBC News investigative producer Laura Strickler that this guy, who Trump has nominated to be the new head of FEMA, uh, whatever his personal issues may be, whatever the altercation was, I don't know, whatever else is going on with him, turns out he was the person at FEMA headquarters who was personally, individually, the point of contact at FEMA headquarters in D.C. for the official who just got arrested on 10 felony counts for bribery. She is charged with alleged crimes that started right after Hurricane Maria. In October 2017, according to the indictment, her alleged crimes started in October 2017 and continued through April of this year, April 2019. We have obtained an April 2019 FEMA org chart. And as you can see here, right in the center, here is the deputy regional administrator for the Caribbean area, as it says at the top of the chart there. That's the person who just got charged with 10 felony counts for bribery. And as you can see, there is one line that shows where she connects to FEMA headquarters. It's a line that goes to the right out of her little box. And there's one guy's name in that box that she connects to. And that is the guy who Trump nominated to be the new head of FEMA. Um, according to a statement that FEMA gave us tonight, quote, the dotted line on this organizational chart represents a coordinating relationship. Okay. I mean, separate and apart from whatever the, personnel, uh, the personal issue is with this nominee to run FEMA, and whatever the altercation <laughs> may have been with this guy if there was one. I mean, would they have to give the guy a redo confirmation hearing at this point? So, Mr. Byard, tell us more about the billion-dollar federal bribery scheme in Region 2. Did they coordinate that with you? How are your other regions? Did you know that the person just arrested in that bribery scheme had a deputy who was also recently arrested in another multi-million dollar gigantic bribery scheme involving the U.S. government? Was that a problem in that office? Was that like a red flag at all? And you're going to run the whole agency now. Uh, well, apparently, we can now report that Mr. Byard does not want a redo confirmation hearing. There has just been reporting in the last hour from several outlets that the White House is pulling this new nomination to run FEMA, uh, including from the New York Times, which reports that the issue was a, quote, barroom altercation. We can report exclusively here tonight that Jeff Byard actually sent a letter to the acting director of Homeland Security last Thursday, formally requesting his nomination be withdrawn. Or at least we can tell you about the existence of a letter written to the acting director of Homeland Security that is dated last Thursday. I don't know when it was actually written, but it is dated September 12th. Here's the letter. Uh, I think this is exclusive. This is the first anybody has seen this letter as far as we are aware. Quote, Secretary McAleenan, sir, please accept this as my formal request to withdraw my nomination to serve as the administrator for the Federal Emergency Management Agency. I feel it would be best for me to focus entirely on pressing issues related to my current role as the Associate Administrator for Response and Recovery. So that is that, apparently. I should tell you that we have been communicating with FEMA about the Bayard nomination for several days now. Um, and we've had a lot of back and forth with them about the official who was arrested, 
her deputy, who was also arrested on different bribery charges, on Bayard's role as the person at FEMA headquarters who had a coordinating relationship with her, the only person on the org chart who was connected from FEMA headquarters directly to her office. We've been talking to them about that um, for a couple of days now, and a lot today. And I just want to tell you, in the interest of full transparency, they called us literally five minutes before showtime tonight to tell us that actually um, Jeff Byard had withdrawn his nomination last Thursday. They didn't mention his withdrawn. We're asking about Byard for days. They didn't say anything about his nomination being withdrawn. Five minutes before we got a showtime today, they said, oh, yeah, he's been gone for a week. Make of that what you will. The letter they gave us tonight is dated last week. It is dated September 12th. Tonight, Axios reports that although Jeff Byard's nomination uh, was not formally withdrawn, uh, President Trump had a new guy in mind already. I'm sure he'll be great if that is, in fact, the new pick. I'm sure he'll be great. And I'm sure he's been very carefully vetted. Otherwise, they wouldn't put his name out there. And at one level, this is just another on the pile of Trump-related criminal indictments, right, since he has been president. At another level, it is the umpteenth sequel in the ongoing, career-destroying, soul-sucking horror movie that is the Trump administration's either refusal or complete inability to vet people for senior jobs or even not-so-senior jobs in the U.S. government. On yet another level, this is a fairly keen insight into just how well the Trump administration has taken care of the people of Puerto Rico especially in the aftermath of that natural disaster, which would not have claimed 3,000 American lives had it not been so drastically botched as a disaster relief effort, most particularly when it comes to the infrastructure and power grid of Puerto Rico. But if you look at it from the Trump administration's own perspective, in terms of what they care about and what they want to be known for and what they want to be seen doing, I mean, there's President Trump today at the border in California signing a, piece, signing a piece of the border, literally writing his name on a piece of the border. And here's the Trump administration happily defying the Pentagon and Congress and a million lawsuits and lots of very reasonable concerns, including national security concerns, to instead take money from wherever the president can, including the U.S. military, because it has to go instead to the border, because the border must be secured, because homeland security is everything. Well, this is the stuff they most care about. This is the stuff they most want to be judged on. This is the stuff that, where they're putting all of their effort to the detriment of even other stuff that has real political cost when they lowball it, right? Well, the Department of Homeland Security is now led by an acting secretary who was supported by an acting deputy secretary. You might have seen the news today that they just inexplicably fired the general counsel of the Homeland Security Department as well, the top lawyer in the department. Quote, we thank John for his service and we wish him well. This is the top lawyer in Homeland Security. They pushed him out so suddenly yesterday that the Trump administration still doesn't know who's going to replace him. The White House says it's one guy. The Department of Homeland Security says it's some other guy. Who knows? We haven't bothered to get our story straight. But he had to be fired immediately. And whoever is going to come in to be the new general counsel, he'll be acting too. So there's an acting secretary, acting deputy secretary. Now there'll be an acting general counsel or maybe two. Who knows? The sort of chief, chief operating officer of the Department of Homeland Security is the undersecretary of management. That's an acting person right now as well. Customs and Border Patrol, that's an acting commissioner. ICE, that's an acting director. U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, that's an acting director. And of course, well, FEMA, uh, where do I begin? And like I said, I'm sure the new guy, the new, new, new guy will be great. I mean, I wonder who they'll find to replace the folks against whom all the felony bribery charges are pending. I mean, I don't think we have, in, from our back and forth with FEMA today, it seemed like they were trying to assure us that those people would not be staying on while their charges penned, like while they're out on bail. FEMA, I think, was assuring us that that wouldn't happen. But you know, it is hard to get good people these days. I mean, this is what they want to be best at. This is what they want to be seen working on to the exclusion of everything else. And now tonight, as the FEMA director's nomination is pulled in very weird circumstances, tonight there is new news of what is just now falling apart in the plan to take money from the military to pay for the wall instead. We've got brand new news on that front next. Stay with us. 
Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.